And it requires you to dig a little deeper within yourself, to trust, experiment, play, express, and take action in risks despite your fears, your limiting beliefs, your lack of experience and lack of resources. This is the creativity I'm talking about on the road to creative empowerment. Welcome to Soul Led Creative Women, a podcast for creatively curious women seeking rich, soul-led ways to look after themselves better. I'm Sam Horton, and in this episode, we'll explore the second part of the three-part series, the what, why, and how map of creative wellness. We'll explore why creative empowerment mirrors your overall wellness and why it's such a powerful addition to your wellness toolkit. Simply put, when we're creatively disconnected, we're most likely disconnected in other areas of our life too. This is because we don't yet have the creative means or a vehicle to connect with ourselves in deep and profound ways. Preferring to live on the surface or in our heads or in our family chaos or in our work or in a relaxing bottle of wine. We've all been there. Sometimes we simply forget about ourselves. We find it easier to stay in firefighting mode rather than finding the time to understand our inner world and our preferences, beliefs and experiences, responses, our emotions, desires, our natural rhythms and our subconscious wisdom. Creativity is a wide and broad term. And whilst creativity can take on many valid and glorious forms, it's important at this point to make a distinction between creative craft making for relaxation or passing the time and the work of deep creative art, neither of which require you to be an artist or a professional creative, by the way. Ultimately, whichever way you look at it, creativity is beautiful and a good use of time. So this is a difficult concept to wrap yourself around. But first, let's just examine what creative craft making for relaxation or passing the time looks like. It looks like following a pattern or recipe. It looks like the meditative experience of solving jigsaw puzzles. It looks like paint by numbers or mindful colouring. And it looks like step-by-step art classes. None of these are bad, by the way, and they're still way better than a lot of the non-creative alternatives. I grew up in a house where my mum was an avid crafter, maker and creative, but she was definitely um, using creativity to relax and ease boredom. She used her creativity to uh, pass the time for enjoyment, relaxation, and a sense um, of accomplishment. A lot of the stuff she made was impressive, but she struggled to believe in her creative capabilities outside of the rules, outside of the boundaries, and she struggled to take creative risks. Still to this day, she won't even attempt crocheting or cooking without a pattern or a recipe. She studied counted cross-stitch for years. Some of her most elaborate creations, they literally took her years to master and complete. Tiny needles with micro silky threads woven into blank linen in methodical and precise counted counted crosses. Um, to create intricate images. They were like paintings using woven satin thread and tiny sparkling beads. They were stunning, and yes, they required skill, but they all came from highly detailed instructions, rules, and boundaries, and she would unpick anything that didn't comply. So then, what does the deep work of creative art look like then? It looks like a blank canvas and your imagination. It looks like uh, freehand, playful, tactile sculptures. It looks like improvising recipes from what you have on hand in the fridge. It looks like poetry and blank pages filled with melodic words. It looks like being the pattern writer or the illustrator or the engineer. It looks like entrepreneurship and creating a business from nothing. 
And it requires you to dig a little deeper within yourself, to trust, experiment, play, express, and take action in risks despite your fears, your limiting beliefs, your lack of experience, and lack of resources. This is the creativity I'm talking about on the road to creative empowerment. For me, this looks like an art practice creating traditional 2D art. This is my vehicle. Over the years, I've experimented with many art materials, techniques, and processes with childlike curiosity to help me remember the real me and to help me navigate my inner world so that I can empower myself to tune into my inner power and wisdom. This form of art making is at the heart of the work I do today to support other women on their journey to creative empowerment. I combine traditional art making with holistic wellness practices and soul-led inquiry. I believe a creative practice featuring these elements can help uh, you to experience transformative inner connection, resilience and strength through creative-based action. It provides you with a platform to heal, grow and experience empowerment as you dig deep within yourself through fulfilling and inspiring soul-led creative projects. This way of creating helps you to give yourself permission to rewrite the way you connect with yourself by surrendering to the creative process. Challenging and pushing yourself to create past any fear and in turn helps you to gain unique insights into your inner world giving you the strength and resilience to create more gentle ease and joy in your life. So why is this deep work of creative art making so powerful? As well as promoting mindfulness and emotional regulation, uh, like med meditating through creative action, which promotes calm, relaxation and stress reduction, it also active, um, activates sensory experiences, which make us feel a wide range of emotions and help us to tune into our um, unique preferences and curiosities. But the most powerful way that the deep work of creative art making uh, supports our overall wellness is because it embodies the mind-body-spirit connection, stimulating pathways to deeper self-connection and over time, actually changing the structure of our brain and our natural responses and behaviours as we utilise the blank page, explore our materials, and learn to trust our physical creative responses and achieve creative flow. This deep creative process allows us to explore and challenge our subconscious preferences, beliefs, and experiences through art making. Because of this, what you set out to create will often look quite different from what you actually make. And this is why it's the creative process itself that holds the hidden treasure, providing you with the tools, insights, patterns, and reinforcement as your inner world spills out onto the page and into your art. Now that's powerful. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for sticking with me as we've started to unravel the tremendous power within deep creative work. Thanks for your time. See you next time. Take care. If you'd like to receive three actionable creative wellness tips personalized to your circumstances that you can implement easily straight away, head on over and take my free quiz at samhorton.co forward slash quiz.